what we're doing is what I always classify as kind of big data done right. Um, so Oracle's Oracle's focus on the cloud is is uh, around its it was initially around its Gen two infrastructure, um, which was really kind of the quote unquote IaaS layers like storage, compute, networking, et cetera, and and bringing in and building a team that had kind of been there, done that, that had worked on other hyperscale clouds, um, brought them to successful, um, you know, production scenarios and scale on the one hand. But, you know, when they do the first wave of anything, you make a lot of mistakes. So part of the value prop with OCI for the teams we built out was, hey, you know, come here. You can work through similar problem domains, uh, but you get a chance not only to, to take advantage of newer hardware and languages, and uh, newer networking capabilities, et cetera. But you also have a chance to step back and learn from your mistakes and do it right. You know, let's look at what other people have done in the industry and where it hasn't worked. And so we've done that, I think, quite successfully um, at the IS tier, which is, I think, why you see companies like Zoom kind of migrating into it, um, especially uh, powerful at the way we've done our flat networking infrastructure. But um, when you move up to the data tier, we're really trying to do a lot of the same things. So if you use big data, you mentioned as an example, I had worked um, for years, about six years um, at a, one of the two pure plays in the Hadoop space um, and uh, ran most of the company there. And Hadoop, I think, was a, was a powerful evolutionary technology. It was a like catalyst for a lot of change in the industry uh, because it opened up a lot of workloads and it opened up the possibility of, of dealing with data at scale in ways that, were either very difficult and much more expensive or just weren't possible, right? Um, on the other hand, his design center was like, okay, we built this thing for crunching, uh, you know, content off the web and producing indexes. And now we've got to start to deal with the kinds of data sets and kinds of problems um, that a variety of industries are working with, more traditional enterprise stuff, relational models, et cetera. And uh, it really didn't have a clean transition path in that direction. Um, and, and so what happened in general with the industry is a lot of people, I think, were forward looking. They started to work with Hadoop um, and really get value out of these use cases, but they struggled along the way. Was like infrastructure was hard to scale, it was hard to stand up. You got to run it all the time, right? So you're paying for your max expected capacity on every node, so you're paying for all those computers, right? Whatever lease you did in your colo, you're also paying for power all the time, right? So you got this wonky infrastructure that was built for something else that wound up costing a fortune to try to maintain and keep stable. Um, and I think we, we kind of hit a, a two important inflection points probably around 2016. Um, one was that the public cloud started to become uh, mature enough and hardened enough that people were getting more and more comfortable saying, forget about this HDFS thing. I don't want to run that. Just stick it in object storage and I'll do my data lakes um, at scale and all the ops and all the data integrity and backup and all that. That's somebody else's problem, right? And oh, by the way, it's a lot cheaper. You only pay for what you use, right? Um, and then the, the second thing is once people started to move in that direction, you wound up with the realization that well, the real driver for the scale on hardware was storage more than anything else. Like compute, compute's interesting, right? You're not typically running jobs all the time continuously. There's some cases where you do, but a lot of times people are coming in with ad hoc workloads, batch workloads that maybe run nightly, month, weekly, monthly, right? And, and anytime you're not using the compute, um, you don't want to be paying for it, mm -hmm. right? And again, you, you know, the, the cost is a sort of, hidden form factor because we were running, uh, for example, test clusters at scale in that, and the prior company I was with, my power bill actually dominated uh, my ongoing costs on a month to month basis. It's like all that power, you know, in our case, we were running tests around the clock, so we're using a lot of it. But I think for the typical enterprise user, um, you know, you're looking at something like 15% utilization, 20% utilization, which means 80% mm -hmm. waste. Uh, and that waste isn't just it's sitting there and you're burning you know, energy. It, it really is dollars, too. We can translate directly to dollars. Um, so we, we got to, I think, about 2016, people started to make this migration of data sets into the cloud, and that pretty much killed off the Hadoop market. Um, you know, we're sending it into more of a, a, a slow growth, flatline type phase. 
I don't think it'll go away. I don't think Hadoop's going to go away for a simple reason. You know, it, it's there's still not a great alternative for on-prem, right? So if you haven't made the transition to the cloud or there's a barrier to cloud utilization, um, you know, Hadoop may be a viable choice for true big data. We really have scale-out requirements um, within the enterprise. Um, but for, I think, most companies, most workloads, most enterprises, um, it's a lot simpler to, to use the data lake as a model within the cloud and then only use whatever is required for the job at hand while you need it and then release it. So then you get you get away from this fixed capacity model, you get away from all the resource scheduling and allocation problems um, that come up when you have these you know finite clusters and you get the ability to still take advantage of the kind of um, computational models and efficiencies um, that were available in the big data world. So, you know, it's not, and it's, it's interesting too, once you move into that cloud model where you're spinning it up over top of object store, your, your, your uh, computer frameworks, you're really not constrained in terms of technologies you can use. You're not dependent on a distribution. Um, it could be that the implementation technology could be entirely behind a service, um, or um, it could be something that you're programming you know, coding against, say like Python or, or uh, Spark and one of the Spark dialects. And uh, you know, you can take advantage of it at will. Right. And and that that kind of flexibility, especially when you start to bring in um, data science and machine learning, I think is is uh, super important. Right. So for example, on the data science side, uh, I may wind up with a new framework, new algorithms that I wasn't using in the past. Maybe these required GPUs in terms of compute shapes to run them efficiently. On the cloud, no problem. I don't have to go off and buy an appliance, sit it on the side of a cluster, try to copy data back and forth. Uh, you know, I grab the compute shapes I need, I use the framework I need, and uh, you know, I'm off to the races, uh, able to run run forward with my job. Not quite that simple in reality because you got concerns like security and governance and so forth um, that vendors uh, really need to continue to advance the ball on as new technologies emerge. But I'd say that you know that there was a fundamental paradigm shift. So something you hear this like Hadoop is dead, long live Hadoop, kind of doesn't really make any sense to me. I think you know Hadoop pretty much flatlined. Eventually it'll go away. Um, what's replaced it really is this sort of native um, integrated machinery around the cloud, and I don't think there's ever going. We'll, we'll never go back paradigmatically. Thank you so much for checking out this clip from the Data Talk podcast. To watch the full episode, you can either go to the Experian blog, the URL is experian.com slash datatalk, or you can click on the link, which is found in the description of this video.